Hi guys and welcome back to the Grind podcast. If you're new here and you've never watched an episode of the Grind podcast or you've never seen my face before, hi, I'm Cav, I'm your host, and we are a platform dedicated to inspiring young Kenyans to get up, focus, run towards their dreams cuz who said you're too young though? We don't believe you're too young to achieve anything that you put your mind to. So you'll be hearing from some of the youngest and most successful Kenyans doing it big right now who don't care about the glass ceiling, the environment, the economy or the time that we live in. They said, "You know what? We've got a dream. We're going to chase it and we're going to do amazing." So, I hope this inspires somebody out there looking to change their lives, change their mindset and run towards their dreams, and we hope you enjoy this episode. Our next guest is quite special because he is the only Kenyan to make the cut in the last two rounds of this year's Magical Kenya Open golf tournament at Mutsaga Country Club. He has been making strides in the golf world, taking Kenya's name abroad and globally. He's not just that, he's a good friend and a comedian, I would say, because if you've never watched his TikTok, he is quite funny having about 2 26,000 followers on his TikTok currently and growing as he should. Welcome to the Grind podcast, Mutahi Kibugu. Thank you for having me. You're welcome. How are you? I'm all right. I'm all right. Just yeah. um chilling. Congratulations. Thank you. It was um it was an amazing achievement. Yeah. yeah. It uh it was actually a surreal experience huh? yeah. and it just it honestly meant everything to me. It was it was just an amazing week. Yeah. yeah. Congratulations. We love to see young people doing big <laughs> things. You and your brother, wow. Wow. You're about to take Kenya to the next level when it comes to golf. And we're so happy to have you on the podcast. Um it's really a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you for for taking some time off your busy schedule ah, to anytime. see us. Um now I don't want to start with golf. I usually don't start with a person's profession. I usually start by asking them questions about how you've been mentally, physically, um, emotionally. I thought you were going to start with some some drama but some uh, drama. it's some okay. Start slowly. Start we slowly. we don't want no drama here. <laughs> We're here to motivate and give people self development tips, you know? Um but how are you mentally, emotionally, physically, psychologically? I'm okay. I think I'm I'm in a really good space right now. Yeah. I've really been working hard not only on the golf course but off the golf course on yeah. like my physical condition. Yeah. And um so I've been going to the gym a lot and the gym is not only for me physically, it's mm. for my mind. Yeah. So it's really been a big part of how I'm doing right now. Yeah. And I'm I I feel great like all my friends are like happy. I don't know man, it's just positive it's just vibes right now. It's just it's just What did that person say? Yeah. He said um I'm trying to be happy and I want all the people around me to be happy. And exactly. I love that. I keep doing that. Now when it comes to family, can you tell me a bit yeah. about your background, about your backstory because I do know you were born in Uganda. Yeah, I was. So you traveled, you lived a bit. How do you how did you do that? What's it about? Yeah, so I was born in Kampala, Uganda. Mm-hmm. Me and my small brother actually, mm-hmm. who I'll get to in like a minute. Okay. Yeah, so I lived there for about nine years, mm-hmm. and um, yeah, Uganda really shaped like who I am as a personality because um, Uganda is is full of just happy souls, you know. Yeah. And they really support like their people. Yeah. Not that Kenyans really support; they do ke- really support But their really? people. Really? <laughs> it's just it's just sometimes it's on and off yeah. yeah so they're very happy people so they really shaped me when I was younger mm-hmm. and then I moved back to Kenya around 2011 mm-hmm. where I started taking up golf seriously and everything yeah but um yeah I have uh, two brothers mm-hmm. one is called Kagwe he yeah. is currently 30 I have a younger brother who plays golf yes. who is also quite famous in the in the golf world and yeah, everything. Yeah, we see the brothers yeah. doing great things. And I have a sister who a lot of people don't know yeah. who is one of my I'm actually really close to her as a sibling. Oh, like I I tell her everything. Mm-hmm. Gossip like whatever anything it is. Anything and yeah. everything. Anything. The person you go to. Ah, we love sisters. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and then uh, my mom and dad have also they're very open people. Mm-hmm. So they've never really held back on telling me anything. Yeah. So it's actually made me who I am because I'm a very straightforward person. Like yeah. if I want to tell you something, I'll tell you something. I'll tell you. Tell yeah. it to you straight. Or if it's bothering me, I'll just 
You I'll see. I'll say one now. Yeah. Yeah, so that's that's about it. Oh, I like that. What is like the most important lesson you've probably learned from your parents growing up? From my parents? Yes. I think it would be um if you ever want something, mm-hmm. never hesitate to go at it. Yeah. Like and also don't take no for an answer. Mhm. Yeah. Ooh, like don't take that. no for an answer. Be persistent. Yeah. Because you never know what can happen. Yeah. Yeah. You just have to try and try and try until you get it. If you yeah. put your mind to it, you can do bro, it. You, you can you can get anything you in this world, man. I know a lot of people don't have that good advice. I think it's really important to have at least somebody backing you in your corner. Yeah, hundred percent. And and giving you enough advice that is going to help. A lot of people are told, okay, just do it. If it doesn't work out, yeah, move on. But in reality, it's like if that's what you want to put your mind to, you can do it. Especially you who started golf at such a young age. Yeah. Like you could have given up by now, cause you're what twenty two. Yeah, I'm twenty two now. You could have given up and been like, ah, oh, this isn't working, and then you wouldn't be here. No, really? I was I was about to a couple of times. Really? Huh? Yeah, yeah. Why? Because um, golf is actually a very hard game. Like I I won't lie to you. Yeah. It is, it's very hard on the mental. And also when you reach like a certain level, yeah. it's very hard to get better and better and better. It's like the small things you do, the one yeah. percent that makes you better than a lot of people you play against. Yeah. So I was about to quit a few times, but I was it's yes. that lesson I learned, yeah, just being persistent and, yes. and grinding. Yeah. Okay, because I hear you say golf is a mental game. Yeah. And I don't think I've ever heard anybody say that. To be honest, I'm not much of a golf person. My dad loves it yeah. but, and tried to get me into it, but I never really got into it. What exactly have you done over the years that have prepared you mentally for the game? Because that's insane. To be able to control your mental, that's something that's a gift not a lot of people have, and people are still struggling at an old age to do that. What is it? How did you manage that? I do things that really test me off the golf course. Okay. Like I might sound crazy right now, huh? Uh-huh. But like <laughs> I might sound mad. Uh-huh. But I I do things that most people won't do. Yeah. I'll say this weekend I'm going to climb Mount Longonot. And you do it. And I'm going to go around and everything. And and, and I'll do it. And you'll do it. Yeah, without training. I actually wanna go climb Mount Kenya. I've been trying to climb Mount Kenya for the past I think two months, three months. Yeah. But nobody wants to take me. It's hard. Oh my god. It, it's it is hard. hard. I've done yeah. it. Have you done it? Yeah, I did it in year eight after GC not GCSEs after year eight exams we all it's something convenient that day. thing must be unreal by the way literally we were about me and a couple like maybe four other people who reached the peak how many days does it take like a week like a week like we were there climbing for a week That's it's crazy. long it's cold it's hard because it's the peak, when you get to the peak where you are able to yeah. actually like climb to, not yeah. the peak peak, but the peak where you're able to climb to, you're sliding. Yeah. You're almost at a 90 degree angle. It's insane. But I think it's something that Kavina did well for us. They tested us like yeah. that. And I think do it. Oh my gosh, if you want to do it, do it. I'm so for Put your mind to it. You can do it. Like, <laughs> no, I'll definitely try it very soon. I'm not coming with you, though. I can't lie. <laughs> I've done that. I'm done with that. That's an achievement, but I'm done with that. I say do it. It's it's insane. What else do you do? What else do I do? Mm. I dance a bit, sometimes. A bit. Yeah, yeah. sometimes. Like that's a lie. <laughs> a bit. I remember you teaching us. What did you teach us? What was that leg thing? That TikTok. Oh, that other dance. He can dance, guys. Don't listen to him. <laughs> He's the dancer. See on TikTok. Yeah, so I, I like dancing sometimes. I just like entertaining, you know. Yeah. Like if I, if I could try being an actor, I would. You you'll be there. <laughs> you'll be like, I'm Mutahi. I'm waiting for you on what's Kiasi. <laughs> I swear. No, if there was Love Island Nairobi, uh, I I would make that for sure. I'ma be on that too, you know. But you ready for hey, it? But man, I know. I don't think. I know. <laughs> Our parents would be like, "What are you doing?" Yeah, for sure. But yeah, I love that. Okay, I love that you test yourself and you're able to just do it, because that's not something a lot of people can do. Yeah. I'm um, one. you've been golfing for a really long time. Yeah. Built your mental. Um, how long? How's your experience been golfing? It's well, been since you're a kid. Since I was a kid. Mm-hmm. It's been good because um, I was lucky because I met a bunch of talented kids also at my age. Yeah. So I got to train with them because a lot of 
older guys don't like playing with younger guys when they're better, better than, them. than them. Yeah. Ah, yeah, so it that. it's hard to play with guys and everything. Mm-hmm. And actually when I entered the national team like at around 13 13 14, wow. A lot of those guys were older than mm-hmm. like 25, 26. Yeah. So it was really different for me. So they also taught me a lot mm-hmm. like in the golf world. Mm-hmm. But I just I matured a lot at a younger age. Yeah. Like by the time I was 13, 14, 15, like I traveled so much alone I felt like I could just could do anything, I could do anything, honest. yeah. And just I just go anywhere. So yeah. so yeah, that helped. But I've been playing for a long time since I was six, about 15 years. Hey, no way. How many years is that? <laughs> I don't even know. I'm bad at math. 20 like 22 minus 6 is what? Cricket. <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. No, for you. No, no, no. 16. No, it's 14, 14 years. 14. Yeah, it must. It's 16. Hey guys, can't do this. Thing. I know. <laughs> Cricket. <laughs> Do we go to school? Hey. We did. That's crazy. Did you ever feel like why did you ever feel forced, almost coerced to, to doing golf? Cuz I know your dad is the one who got you into golf in Uganda. Yeah. But did you ever feel like this is not actually what I wanted to do or did you just go ahead with it and you were like, "Okay, you know what? I'm doing this so I might as well." No, not really. I felt like it's always been my passion. Like yeah. since I was like 11, 12, yeah. I wanted to be a professional golfer. Yeah. Like the most famous golfer is like Tiger Woods. Yeah. And he's and he's black. So that that really Literally. that really stood out to me, man. Yeah. Because there weren't a lot of There's black golfers. There's a representation golfers. you need as a kid. Exactly. Mm-hmm. He's he's everything, man. Yeah. So So yeah, I really looked at him and I wanted to be him. Yeah. I mean, there were other things I wanted to do. I become a professional wrestler. <laughs> you know WWE was so big yeah. back in the day. I don't know how you guys watch that. I can't even lie. That nah, was too good, man. <laughs> hey, like be a professional footballer because you know every kid has that stage. Yeah. You know? But then um I didn't really have the mechanics at that time yeah. to do that. <laughs> <laughs> so I gave up. And then I was like, man, let me just stick to golf. Yeah. But I was always serious with it like in between. I was still playing tournaments and everything. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. I like that. It's so cute. <laughs> at age what 6 5 I yeah, had 6 6 being a and knowing exactly what you want to do basically basically no, it's it's insane that's insane i was basically put i was basically put on this route and said and just, nah you're not leaving you're you're, you just, you're, you're, there. you're actually where you're supposed to be <laughs> yeah exactly I, i'm like 20 what 23 and i still i'm still trying to figure it out but you were like 6 and you were like okay i like this i get it let's go Yeah, 100%. That's great. I need a break. Hey, <laughs> <laughs> minus 6. Yeah, I can't do that like that. It's, it's, uh... So you talked about your inspiration, talked about seeing Tiger Woods on TV and thinking, "Oh my god, this is a black man and he does golf. I can do it too." Yeah. But I feel like you have more than Tiger Woods as an inspiration. Who is your biggest inspiration right now? Right now I would say my dad. Your dad? Yeah. Oh. 100%. Is he a golfer? Yeah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Just runs in the family. Yeah, my dad was actually a very good golfer. Mm-hmm. He played for the national team also like when in in his younger days. Yeah. So I see why he got you guys into it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so but I don't really look at him inside golf. I look at him more outside okay. golf. Because he's a very driven, hardworking guy. Yeah. And he's and he's so chill that he nothing will ever like phase him. phase him or anything. He's just so composed. Yeah. You know. It's like, crazy. If we're late for something, he won't even be agitated or anything. He'll just say, "I'll be there in 30 minutes. Either you wait for me. Yeah. Or, you, or we or you cancel could, the yeah. meeting. Yeah. Exactly. So it's just. Dads are crazy, you know. Yeah. I, know I don't know are. how they do it. Even my dad does the same thing, and I'm there. Dad, please hurry! Like I need to be here, and I'm stressed, and he's just like, "Don't worry." And I'm like, "Yeah," but I think it's because they've gone through so many years, bro. They just know. Honestly, but they're also definitely important people. Yeah, because true. nobody waits for unimportant <laughs> people. <laughs> like they're definitely important people. Mm, yeah, that's fine. That's so nice. I love when parents are the inspiration for my guests because it means a lot to have a good parent or at least. Have a supportive parent around and somebody who can like motivate you know a lot of people have that yeah and i have a really good team around me yeah like apart from like my dad and my brothers yeah i have um a mental coach 
A mental coach? Yeah, I have a mental coach. What does he teach you? He teaches me how to think right and think positive, Uh like all the time. So what is like a class with him like? There's one day we spend our whole class removing the word can't from my vocabulary. So what he was like? So every time I was like, I can't do that. He said, when you do that, give me 20 push-ups. Anytime you you Ooh. say that, give me twenty push-ups. So I actually I don't use that word at all. The word can't. You can't. Yeah. If you can't use I don't the word say, can't. Yeah. And if I don't say if. It's a definite. Yeah, it's a definite. It will happen. Yeah. Ah! <laughs> I like that. I like that. A lot of people have that in the even me. I'll be like I can't, and I'm like, why am I saying that? Because that's mentally teaching yourself yeah, that you can't I, do exactly. it. Exactly. It's making yourself unsure. Yeah, and you probably can. Yeah, it's 100%. just something you're just putting in your mind. Whatever you speak into existence happens. Your mind is a powerful tool. Okay. Yeah. Who's more what's the rest of your team like? Oops. The rest of my team. Yeah, you have a mental coach, you have your parents, your brother. Yeah, my brothers. Um I now I now have like a manager and agent. Yeah. So like yeah, so like he helps me a lot, bro. Because a lot of times I used to get confused about where am I going next? Yeah. You know, problem is with golf it's never in one place mm. you always have to travel like quite a bit to get to get to other like tournaments and everything yeah so yeah so i recently got one just to help me with all of that so it keeps me manager. like yeah it keeps me focused on like what i'm supposed to do yeah yeah so i find that everyone has managers are important no they are because you're too busy as the professional yeah. as the star it used to be my big brother but i, I fired him <laughs> <laughs> bye guys guy useless man <laughs> <laughs> How did you go about recruiting him? Um, just a few friends I knew from the golf club that just asked me, like, do you have, like, a manager or anything? Mm-hmm. And um, they just gave me contacts and everything. Yeah. So, yeah, I just got in contact with the guy. And uh, he helped me. So he can actually help me get invites into other countries and everything. So it's it's it's, wow. it's insane, man. Look yeah. at you, big star. <laughs> That's, like, star status. Imagine having a manager. I want a manager. Can you be my manager? Soon. <laughs> okay. Uh huh. Anybody else other than your manager? I know you do gym. You said you do gym. Yeah, I do gym. Also, my trainer. Shout out to Arnold. That's my guy. <laughs> Shout out to you, Arnold. What's it like? Okay, what's uh, what's Mutahi's gym week like? Do you gym every day? Do you gym once in a while? So I gym Mondays, Tuesdays. I break Wednesdays. Okay. Then I'll gym Thursday, Friday. Okay. But if I'm feeling good, like in a week, I'll throw in a small gym session on Sunday. Yeah. So it's, I wasn't it's, expecting that. <laughs> so it's three, Wednesday. four, five times a week. That's so insane. How do you do that? Like, I've tried gymming. I mean, I've been gymming. <laughs> wink, wink. Um, but it's so difficult. It's something that you really have to be able to prepare yourself for every day. You wake up, you're like, oh my God, I have to go to gym. Yeah, but it gets easier. It becomes like a daily thing. Yeah. It's like eating breakfast. It's a routine. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You go three or four days after gymming for a month, and you go three or four days without that gym. Yeah. You even it feel feels sick. Weird. Yeah. You feel wrong. Yeah. Like something's up. I can't lie. That happened to me. I kind of slowed down on my routine, and I was like, I can, I can feel the changes. I can feel I'm not having as as much energy as I used to. Yeah. Or feel as great as I used to. I'm less positive, and it's terrible. It's yeah, actually bad. It's like it's like everything. No. So what do you do during your four day gym week? Um, so I'll do different exercises. So like Monday is like weight day. So I'll do I always do a lot of legs. I do legs almost every day. Why like, legs? Don't you because need arms? Not really. More power in a golf swing is from the ground. So you need strong legs. Ah. And you need a strong base. Uh-huh. And you need loose hips and strong <laughs> glutes. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Those, those things are essential, by mm-hmm. the way. Yeah? Mm-hmm. They're so essential. essential. <laughs> like, yeah. in a week, I think I do like over like a hundred squats or something. Like, in a week. Easy. Easy? <laughs> yeah, easy. <laughs> easy? So, uh-huh. so, yeah. So, it's all of that training, flexibility, yeah. uh-huh. and uh, mobility days. So, yeah, that's mainly what I do in the gym. Wow. Congratulations. Well done. <laughs> I know for a fact that's hard as hell, but that's really good. Like, but I mean, as an athlete, yeah. you definitely have to get into that. Yeah, you definitely have and, to. And and be able to just sustain yourself in that way. Yeah, I definitely wouldn't gym if I was an athlete. 
You think? It's, yeah, it's so But much men work are so men gym for the sake of it. Yeah, but like I would find other things to do, you know. Dance. No. <laughs> no. No, no, I'm not dancing. No dance. Yeah. I'm not dancing. <laughs> I'm going for a run or something like that, but like, like I want to get into Zumba. Roomba. I can't jam. I swear. Okay, I've been doing well, guys. Don't listen to me. I've been doing well. But my mama was like, okay, come on. If you can't jam, at least do Roomba, Zumba, something like that. Anyway, I'm moving on. So, um, you had a great, great, great weekend. Yeah, I did. Congratulations again. Thank I have to you. tell you that every single time <laughs> I talk about it. Magical Thank you. Kenya Open. Um, and you played... Sunrise, sunshine tour. Yeah, sunshine tour. Last yeah. year, how was that? Um, it was a humbling experience, huh? Yeah. Cause I've always been at the top level in Kenya. Hey. So yeah, so I, <laughs> so I kind of went there and I found that, man, these guys are good, bro. Like yeah. everyone is like me. Yeah. Everyone does like the same thing, bro. Yeah. So it was a humbling experience. So I actually didn't do well in my first like six tournaments. Really. Yeah, and um. It really taught me to grind, man. Like, oh my God. Like, I was in a very bad mental space about, like, seven months ago. Because mm-hmm. I wasn't doing well. Yeah. And you know, as a golfer, how you earn money is it's making b- the cut. Exactly. In tournaments. Now, seven missed cuts in a row. Eish. That's no money oh in your gosh. bank account. Yeah. Oh my gosh. That's the no money, money is gone. <laughs> the, it's not even reached, not touched. Uh, yeah. But then? So then now, when you, when you don't have a lot of, like, sponsors because you know golf is expensive man sadly yeah. sadly it's still seen as a rich man sport but hopefully that will change yeah yeah hopefully it'll be the one to change it mm. hopefully yeah soon, soon. i think so mm-hmm. so now i believe um, in you <laughs> <laughs> so now it's um so yeah so it's i don't forget what was i saying <laughs> say. i'm so you nice say, oh my God. <laughs> Yeah, so for seven months, I was in a really bad space. Mm-hmm. And um, it started picking up when I came back to Kenya around October, November. Yeah. I had a tournament here where I finished fifth. So that picked me up. I went to Uganda. I did well in Uganda. Mm-hmm. Then I picked up like two top threes, came second. And it was just, it just I kept coming. Yeah, there. It was just kept coming, man. And I just kept grinding. I worked hard through yeah. the bad times. Yeah. And that's the only thing you can do when you're down and out, man. Like, exactly. You're, you're, you're rock bottom. Yeah. The only way is up, bro. The only way is up, honestly. Yeah. People are always like, no, no, no. Trust me, hit rock bottom, guys. You, yeah. Yeah, the You're going to figure up, it don't. out. You need to be at the worst state to actually figure it out. Yeah, 100%. Most so. of the time, at least. Yeah. So, yeah, I picked it up and look where we are now. I know. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> open. <laughs> Made the cut in the last two rounds. Oh, Bank with Absa. Afri. <laughs> <laughs> Not you saying you're gonna do that. You actually did it. <laughs> no, nah, I did it just once. Just once. How was it when you got sponsored by them? How did they approach you? Did they just like? Were they just like, okay, I want you? How did it feel? It felt amazing, man. That such a prestigious bank would have me as their brand ambassador. Yeah. So I really felt. Um, I was so. I was just happy, man. I was. So, it was so crazy because nothing like that ever happened to me before. Yeah. And they picked like some certain professionals. Yeah. And they sponsored them. Yeah. But um, yeah, they wanted to do a lot of media with me since I'm young, and um, yeah, man, they just they just love me and I, I love them. So, yeah. So like, shout out to Abso for sponsoring me and everything. Thanks. Yeah. yeah thank you so much, man. Oh, but, I love yeah. that. Okay, so as you were talking about when you get low, you just pick yourself up how how does it feel okay now how does it feel how do i approach this question what do you how do you deal with it okay so there's okay just picking yourself up yeah but what exactly do you do in those moments in those moments in those moments i first sit down and analyze what's going wrong yeah like what am i doing wrong at the moment that is not making me succeed or is making me feel this way yeah so once i point that out now yeah I can now work on it and see how to get better. Yeah. Like, what solutions can I make now? Yeah. So, yeah, so I'll write some things down. Mm-hmm. I'll write options of what I can do. Yeah. And I'll, I'll just start doing that immediately. And I'll stop doing the bad habits that I was doing yeah. before. That's so hard. That's literally so hard. I feel like, of course, you've worked on your mental. Yeah. So that's a bit easier for you. No, it, it is hard. It is hard, honestly. But, um, 
you just you just learn man it is still hard for me now till this day yeah like nobody's perfect no but um of course still have negative thoughts but you just gotta fight them man. yeah yeah that's the only way to do it because they all will be there yeah, regardless yeah. they will always be there it's all just the about how you wanna how how to approach it stop thinking negatively it's very important not to do that I always, like, I'll have, like, you know, my intrusive thoughts. Yeah. And I'll be like, no, no, stop thinking, stop thinking. I'm like, stop thinking about that, stop thinking about that. That's how I deal with it. Yeah, that's and actually me on the golf course, even. Literally? Yeah, when a, when a nev- negative thought just comes to my mind, I'm like, hey, stop those thoughts. No, stop. no, no. Stop them. <laughs> Muchahi, I don't want to hear you say that. No. Yeah, yeah I talk and to it's all happening in, in your mind. Person, yeah, so <laughs> much. Right, me uh, too. Even you, huh? I <laughs> love it. It's the I'm best like, thing, Come man. on. Like, you know you better than this. Come on. I love that. Actually, speaking about being on the golf course, when you're on the course, for example, Magical Kenya Open, and you're going to make a putt or a birdie, is yeah. that what you call them? I'm not really yeah. fluent with no, the you're close, golf you're close. terms. You're right? doing well, by the way. Pat myself you're on the well. back for that. <laughs> <laughs> um, what, what goes to your mind? You know those TikToks where they're like, okay, they kind of narrate what goes to their mind yeah, when they exactly. do something. Yeah, I, I what, know those what goes through your mind? I want to know. So first I'll be thinking, okay, what's the situation here? Yeah. Can I put this in the hole? Yeah. Then I'm like, yeah, I can definitely I can. put that in the hole. Uh-huh. There was actually a scenario on Friday evening. Mm-hmm. So I was on the cut line and I had to put one shot in the hole. Mm-hmm. And it, was, it wasn't it was an easy like putt. Yeah. It was actually far. It was probably like 15 meters, uh-huh. which is which is far. Like in general like i'm just nodding my head yeah it's it's not easy for anybody yeah so i thought to myself you know what i can hold this yeah and um when i did my reaction was insane yeah it actually went viral it came from yeah the heart from the heart deep deep. (laughs) you are shocked (laughs) but you told yourself yeah i can do this and i did it yeah man and it it went viral it went like golf's biggest magazine one of the biggest sports analysts um, yeah i honest even reposted it and it just, it was insane to see, to think that that part was seen by like 670 million people. That's insane. It's insane. It's just, it's surreal, man. Yeah. It's oh crazy. my gosh, that's insane. I know you always thank your fans, your supporters. And I'm telling you, I've watched enough videos. I, I didn't make it to the Kenya Open. Yeah. I was in coast at the time. I didn't make it to Kenya Open, but I was watching just all these videos and just seeing everybody's reaction. And I know it must be nerve wracking being, you're literally on the course by yourself. Thousands of eyes staring at you. The sun is blaring in your face. You're like, I need to do this. How does that feel? Like, what is it like? Do you have a rush of adrenaline? Is it you're terrified and people don't know it? Is it what is it? I feel like the crowds actually help me and they all do. the I, and all the attention. Yeah, I don't know wow. why. It's just that I feel like. I'm supposed to be in, in that in that environment. Yeah. Like this is where I'm meant to be. Yeah. So it just puts me in a zone where sometimes I struggle to get out of. Yeah. Like I'm so focused at that moment because yeah. I'm like, I want to make this guy proud. Aww. He came to watch me. I'm, yeah. I'm going to give him a show. I'm going to show you. Yeah, what? I'm going to give him a show. <laughs> so yeah, so I just get in a sudden zone where I'm just so comfortable. And um, I thrive when the pressure, under pressure is. Yeah, I thrive under pressure when the pressure is like that. That's some different type of pressure. Because I thrive under pressure, but I don't thrive. I could never thrive under that pressure. That is insane. But no. I mean, you've been doing this for years. Yeah, exactly. It's like doing anything else in life. Yeah. It's just that mine is just hitting a small white ball. A small white ball. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's why it, it's, it's not just... a small white <laughs> ball. It is a small white ball, It is, basically, honest. yeah. Oh, wow. Okay. Work well under pressure. I like that. Okay. So, my next question is... Now, when it comes to golf... You have, of course, played for a really long time. Yeah. What is your game ritual? Because I saw you in a video. I don't know what you were doing. I don't know. I know. I don't know what it was. Yeah. You were like, I don't know, something. I don't know. <laughs> but I wanted to know a bit more about your, your game ritual. Do you pray? Do you affirm, manifest? I mean, okay, so... I have this certain routine, mm-hmm. uh, but I was only told about it later. So okay. it first starts in tournament week. I yeah. cancel red meat. I don't eat red meat from Monday to Sunday. That's the first thing. If Why? I eat, yeah, if I eat red meat, then something's wrong because I sleep badly and I never recover oh, well. Wow. 
Wow. Yeah, it takes too long to digest. So, okay. Yeah, so when I'm in a tournament, mm-hmm. I don't eat red meat. Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I just eat the chicken and fish. Mm-hmm. That's the first thing I start when I'm like in a serious zone. Yeah. The next thing is, um, obviously, there are a bit of butterflies. Yeah. So I'll always walk. I'll take paces, like anywhere. Like okay. anyway, anywhere. Anywhere. Like, and I, I won't even realize until someone tells me, like, bro, why are you walking so much? So it's now like an actual routine. Yeah, it's now like an actual routine. And it. yeah, mm-hmm. and then obviously before I play, before I hit a ball, I do have another routine, mm-hmm. which I cannot show in camera. <laughs> <laughs> I saw you. I don't know what you do. Yeah, Is no, it the I, one I'm, I'm talking. I'm doing. Or almost, almost. Okay. I um, almost like shake. I almost do a lot of like shoulder shaking. Uh-huh. Like I move my hips a bit. You know, golf has like they move their bums a lot. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. so yeah, so we do that, and. Um, yeah, so I have a, a spe- specific routine in yeah. that way. And it never changes. Yeah. Yeah, it's like it's like a ritual, honestly. Yeah. Are you spiritual? Do you pray? I am. Yeah, I'm yeah. a Christian. I pray every morning, every night. Okay. Uh, but I I haven't gone to church in quite a bit of time. Probably three months. Three months? Three months, four months, yeah. I thought you were going to say like years. I haven't oh. been to church in years. <laughs> no, not three months, four months. Probably like... Do you like okay, church, in a church. Though? No, no, I know. Me I, don't, neither. I don't really like it. I feel like it's like really forced on you. They're like, okay, you know, why are you going out? No, no, no. I'm like, for me, I feel like my relationship with God is really personal. Yeah. So what I'll do maybe in the morning, I'll pray. I'll do some, for me, I think spirituality and religion, at least Christianity and spirituality yeah. work together. Yeah, no, I hear So you. I can manifest and affirm at the same time I can still pray. Yeah. Um, but I don't like church. And I, yeah, no. I, did your parents ever like force you? Like, cause yeah, you've been doing it for so long now. Yeah, they did, but I, I, I just thought it was just a money making scheme, you know? It was never like. Yeah. And I used to go to a very. A, a church I thought that had too much drama. Like, they were just so. And they were so political. It was like Nairobi Chapel. Oh, and I never, me I never too. liked Nairobi Chapel, bro. I liked it. Did you like it? I was forced to go. To, I prefer it. Because it's Protestant, it's not Catholic. Yeah, yeah, that's true. So that's why I liked it. I hated going to Catholic church, but why didn't you like it? I don't know, man. I felt like it just wasn't it wasn't for me. It was drama. Yeah, it was, it was a lot of drama. Yeah. There. Yeah. No, but no, I'm definitely a, a very spiritual a person. Spiritual person. Yeah, hundred percent. I like that. I feel like a lot of people really don't know. I find that a lot of people are really in touch with God. Yeah. Which is good and I don't I don't judge, so if you're not it's it's fine. But people always have that one thing. So yeah. Some of us, it's God. Other people, it's different religions or yeah. spirituality. Yeah, people are just like they're just different. I mean, like it's important to have something to believe in, or some somebody. In our case. Yeah. In um, our case. Okay, so I wanted to know what's the difference other than um, going to South Africa and seeing that actually you're the you're in the, on the same. Level. Level is like other and you guys. Just one percent. I love the way you say that. One percent. Yeah. Just that one percent. Um. What else was really different about playing in South Africa? That's different. Maybe to Uganda and Kenya. Like, what was your favorite part about playing in South Africa? That's My it. favorite part. Yeah. I think it was definitely meeting like so many different people. Yeah. I was meeting guys from everywhere, man, and just from different backgrounds. Mm. So I met a lot of different characters who I'm very good friends with right, right now. Right now. So, yeah, so I can basically go anywhere in, like, the Southern Africa. That includes Zim, Zambia. And um, I'd have a house to stay, yeah. Yeah. I'd have a house to stay, so that's the best thing I like. It was, you meet a lot of people, you socialize a lot. Connecting, creating relationships. And golf is the best thing for networking because you you never know who you play with, actually, even Mm -hmm. as an amateur. Mm -hmm. So it's it's really nice. That's very laughing with Mudavadi. Oh, I did you? <laughs> so many. I have so much research. That's you and your big smile. It's so infectious. <laughs> um, but that's okay. That's what you say is the best thing about playing in South Africa. Yeah. Oh, that's okay. definitely the best thing. Okay. Oh. You want to teach me some golf lingo? Because I saw carding three part something 65. Yeah, there's a par four. The holes you play are called there's par three, par four, par five. Okay. Five are the long holes. Okay. Four are the medium holes, and three are the short holes. Okay. And the number is basically tells you how much, how many strokes you're supposed to play 
to get the ball in the hole. Like okay. how many shots you take. Okay. So on the par four, I'm supposed to take four shots to get the ball in the hole. Okay. Anything more than that is not okay. Yeah. Uh, well, at professional level. Yeah. When you're an amateur, you have a handicap, which is your skill level. So they base it on a number. So it's it's, <laughs> it's a bit complicated at the start. Yeah. But, um, but you get a you get the hang it. of it. Yeah. Oh, that's so interesting. Okay, yeah. so what's the sixty-five or sixty-eight? What's so that's now like your total score like okay. once you add it all up and that's called under par okay so or you can call it red figures yeah yeah so that's good <laughs> okay but over par is anything over 72 okay so like when you go 73 74 75 yeah so it's just under par and over par yeah there's no like there's okay. level there's level par which is which is 72 just or just yeah. on it yeah. yeah so yeah that's what okay. you call it so that's that's some lingo. Now I know something. <laughs> Will I remember? I My doubt. Gonna be so mad I doubt. So be like, you know this. I'm like, no, I don't. I never listened when you told me. <laughs> but oh my god. Okay. What would you say is the most difficult part of playing? The most difficult part of playing. Yes. Of playing. Yeah. Like at a professional level. Yeah, at a professional level. I would say the most difficult part is. Um, not really the playing okay. it's more like the the traveling oh, and like okay. how you plan yourself because mm-hmm. you don't want to get tired when you play a tournament week yeah but if you play every day then you'll definitely get tired so you have to you have to really plan your weeks well and you have to know who you're traveling with yeah because it gets very hard when you travel alone it's it's a very lonely sport bro yeah. it's a very lonely sport you can go everywhere alone alone and you'll just Bro, you'll get bored and just... It's not nice, yeah. man. So you you have to also get a team where you go with. So I have a lot of friends who I travel with. Mm-hmm. Um, their names are Dane, MJ, when I'm in Kenya. I travel with a guy called Greg Snow, Ganeev. So yeah, so those guys are... And they're very good friends of mine. So I travel with them like everywhere. Yeah. So just like the planning and getting around. It's a bit harder to start, but it, it gets better. You get the hang of it. Yeah, you get the Everything, hang of it. Everything, you get the hang of it. The yeah. more you do it, the more you get the hang of it. Yeah. Okay, I wanted to know a bit more about how you prepared for the Kenya Open, mentally, physically, like how many times you practice and train. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I just kept in my routine. You know, the thing is, you put a lot of pressure on yourself when you make it bigger than it really is. Mm. So I thought of it as another 18 holes that I'm going to play. Yeah. So I really just kept in my routine, kept doing the same things Mm. I was doing all the time. If I'm meeting my friends at this time, I'm meeting my friends at this time. Oh. I'm not blocking them out just yeah. because of a so-called tournament. tournament. Like, mm. it's just, it's four days of yeah. the same thing you've been doing all your life. Yeah. So, that also really helped me, like, mentally stay comfortable, like, in the Kenya Open. Mm. Yeah, so I was just doing everything I was doing. Gym routine the same. Practice the same. Keeping time for my family and everything. Because you really have to balance them. You can't yeah, take you what you do in work, home. Mm-hmm. It's It's... It destabilizes everything. So, yeah. so yeah, I just kept my routine the same and everything. Mm-hmm. Oh. In fact, how do you, how do you separate professional, professional life and personal life? Because often they can merge into one. No, yeah, they can. No, sometimes I do get carried away. Yeah. Like, I forget I'm playing a golf tournament and I'm here with my friends, yeah. and I'm like, dog. But in the back of my mind, I'm like, I'm not supposed to be here. That's right. <laughs> that, I'm supposed to be doing something. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so no, I'm still getting better at doing that. Yeah. Uh, but um, but yeah, so I try to stay disciplined sometimes. Yeah. So I put my friends aside when I need to. When I need mm-hmm. to, and I and I just do my things. So it is hard to balance them sometimes. Yeah. But you you get used to it. It's important. It's yeah. Always important to balance your life. Yeah. You can't be too much like work work work, then have no end up with no relationship with anybody or friendship with yeah, anybody. Yeah, exactly and connection okay. or too much of the play which i find a lot of kenyans be doing yeah 100 percent. um i really like to add <laughs> kenyans i'm not gonna lie that's the reason for this podcast guys you're not supposed to be comfortable you're gonna hear things you don't want to hear i feel like kenyans do forget that okay yeah you might be 22 you might be 23 you might be 18 but life is not only about partying yeah it's not like what there's so to much more to partying it? yeah there's it's so always gonna be there. That's the thing. Yeah, the club exactly. will still be there when you're 30. I don't have to be there every weekend. You don't. Yeah, I don't. I know. Yeah. And to be honest, I'm speaking from experience, guys. I, think <laughs> I, I don't think I never did it. I did it 
but now we're at a point in time where it's like come on get off focus yeah, exactly. there's dreams to run towards i feel like your 20s are the time where you're supposed to try everything, everything. like try everything out like ex- explore yeah like you know like yeah. what is it i want to do like yeah, with exactly. my life that i'm going to end up doing when i'm like 30 40 50 That's you know that's when you're supposed to have your shit together yeah exactly so like 20s is that time to really indulge try in try fail fail try fail yeah. <laughs> but if you get lost in in the party scene in the sauce <laughs> you'll end up like 30 something and uh, still a bit confused i know so with people with friends like tahi who are there professional golf players <laughs> and you're there like what happened he was working and playing too he left you behind baby like you don't know like i find a lot of people do that and it's just yeah. it's so sad it's a sad reality and that's what we actually do in this podcast is to hear from people like you who know how to okay you've not fully fit, figured it out in terms yeah. of balancing life and personal yeah. um personal and professional life but it's at least to see something or someone like you who's got something going on and hopefully they can be like oh, maybe i'm doing something wrong yes you who's at home <laughs> and party every weekend and do nothing yes you're doing something wrong <laughs> but yeah that's exactly so thank you so much for coming you you deserve all the praise no thank you for having me thank you for having me <laughs> of course friend <laughs> i'm acting like i've never met you before <laughs> friend <laughs> okay i wanted to know a bit about Is there a misconception people have of you? 100%. Yeah. That you wish people didn't know. I mean people which we wish people didn't focus on. Let me say that. Wish people didn't focus on. Okay, is there a misconception? What's the misconception people have of you? A lot of people think I'm quite intimidating to talk to. You are. <laughs> why? Like why? <laughs> like I I saw you, yeah. I don't know. I don't know why is, is it like the I, the way i normally like look and everything mm. but a lot of people tell me they can't approach me like i look like a mean guy and i'm like i'm so friendly you are. I'm, i'm just chilling dog i know i get so, that too. yeah so it's it's so crazy so that's that's one misconception yeah yeah another one is um cuz i also have a tiktok he? yeah okay. there we go we're entering the tiktok <laughs> talk <laughs> cuz uh-huh. i also have a tiktok mm. um some people don't think like i actually have a serious side to me Yeah. Yeah. So I can see how they'd say that. Yeah, you can. But see it's it. like your it's like your other life. You can show you this life and then there's you got yeah. a serious side. My other personality. Mm. Exactly. Yeah. So a lot of people think I'm unserious when I'm on there. When honestly, when I'm there, it's like my free space, man. Yeah. You know, it just it's my just be therapy. free and open. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So yeah. Those are mainly Guys, you opinions. heard he's a nice guy. <laughs> and he's serious too <laughs> so don't have misconceptions of people first talk to them and get to know them yeah you know people do that don't just book by cover don't why would you i mean people do that <laughs> like you can't avoid it okay i wanted to bring in your brother a bit so you are both incredible i think i was listening to a podcast where you were to an interview you were talking and you're like You don't think there's been brothers who've actually like done this in yeah. a really long time which yeah. is yeah like even when I was talking to my dad about it he was like yo tell them they're like insane <laughs> and they're like good and I'm like I will dad don't <laughs> worry I will <laughs> um and of course being two of you from the same family it can be quite competitive and it can be Yeah no it can Is it like friendly competition or is it detrimental like I, I jealousy is jealousy. You can be jealous like it makes sense. Oh, yeah. But what is it like sharing the same field and being really good at the same field with your sibling? No, you know me and my bro are like best friends. Huh? Mm-hmm. Like we don't tell each other or say it. Yeah. But we're, we're like best friends, man. Yeah. So it's really healthy competition. Oh, When one does this, the other like picks up you know yeah. like last year he actually because he made the cut in the kenya open last yeah. year and i, I couldn't that. play because of covid and all that mm-hmm. um so he actually really motivated me to be on the stage the next year and i just turned professional so i was like you know what i'm gonna i'm gonna hustle it out and i'm gonna make it as a pro yeah yeah so he's he's really the main reason why i worked so hard to be like where i am today Yeah, so he's, he's so cute. He's yeah. an inspiration and a motivation. I But he him. actually said before this week, uh, uh-huh. in a in another interview. Uh-huh. He was like, um, 
Yeah, my brother's playing. He probably won't beat me, but <laughs> he, pro- he probably won't beat me. But then I told that young man, respect to elders, huh? respect to elders. Watch please. this space. Yeah. You think? Watch yeah, this. no. So it's, there's definitely a bit of banter and everything, but it's it's fun competition. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like people get up, get caught up with it, especially yeah, when it comes yeah. to siblings. Like I know a lot of people who are super jealous, and I'm like, okay, yeah. but why can't you both succeed? You yeah, know? exactly. Like we're there to help each other. Yeah. Yeah. Build each other and look at you, like you boogos. Am I saying that right? Yeah, you're okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> now they're making strides all over Africa. Um, and well done to the both of you. Thank really, you. really well done. Thank you. Cause I can't wait to see you guys up there. Big names like One day, Ro- Ro- Rory McElroy. Is that his name? Yeah. Is that his name? Right? Rory. Oh my god! <laughs> no way! I did it. <laughs> Guys, see, I know something. Dad, you're teaching me something, by the way. He's gonna watch this and be like, "Come on, you know a lot of things." <laughs> no, I don't remember. You actually said that so well. That's crazy. All right. Yeah, that's crazy. I said in an interview <laughs> where you were talking, so I just brought it up again. Um. Okay. On a more serious note, maybe we can give the people some tips and tricks how do you handle your finances because i know y'all win big money <laughs> like i've never seen that money in my <laughs> bank account <laughs> but i know you win big money but being young it's so easy to just squander all your money on things that you need right now like yeah right now i want the new shoes oh, i'm gonna get them and they cost like 300 pounds and you're like what the hell how do you go about handling your finances i mean I also didn't know how to like mm. a lot, mm-hmm. but now I'm st- I'm still learning now mm. how to make investments. How can I turn five hundred into two thousand? You know. Yeah. So I'm saying, so my my mind is growing. You know. Yeah. I think I'm just I'm just learning different things. Yeah. So yeah, so a lot of investment saving. Yeah. Just uh, remembering the future and just not seeing the number and be like, oh wow, I can buy anything. Now. Yeah. No. Yeah. Oh wow. So, okay. So yeah, but my my big brother helps a lot with that because my he's a banker. Ah, so, uh, you see. Yeah. So. Wow. <laughs> so yeah, lucky helps, you. Yeah. You've got so many people in the family you can learn from. Oh, yeah. So that's, that's why you're the manager. Yeah. The boy. <laughs> yeah. Before. before. Yeah. Before. Before you buy it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. All right. Now we're going into our quick fire segment, and what our quick fire segment is, we ask you five questions. You have about five seconds to answer. You okay. can talk a bit more. It does just doesn't have to be one worded answers. It can be a sentence or a bit of explanation, but at least five seconds. Okay. And you have to say the first thing that comes to your mind. I'm so ready, man. I'm ready. Pick your brain. Okay. Okay, shut up. All right. Let's go. All right. Let's get it, man. What is your purpose in life? To inspire others. I feel like I was put here to to really inspire guys to make them know like they can do anything, bro. Yeah. You know? So I feel like that's that's my main purpose. Not mm-hmm. just to play golf, honestly. Yeah. Like I wanna start like a golf academy and stuff. Oh, in future, yeah. I like that. A golf academy. I'll bring my kids. You should I'm gonna teach them. I'll teach them for free. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> for free, yes. <laughs> okay, um, next question. What is the worst advice you've ever been given? The worst advice I've ever been given? Yes. I think it was, um, you need at least like three plans. Like this plan A, this plan B, this plan C. Yeah. Like I get that, yes. Like You need at least a, a, you backup, need at least plan. a backup plan. Yeah. Yeah, which, which I did. But like, don't tell me that everything can go wrong, <laughs> yeah. you know? Like don't tell me that I as a kid. Know that. So yeah. yeah, that's like the worst advice I ever got. Like I guess I can get a backup and everything, but who said I can't ish. achieve this? One? Yeah, exactly, man. Like who told me I can't? You're the one who said me I can't. Yeah, I think that's the worst advice I ever got. Okay. Yeah. Um. Next question. What would you tell your younger self if they were standing right in front of you right now? I would. That's a very good question. Right. Mm-hmm. That's a very good question. Mm-hmm. I actually never thought of that. Um. I think I would tell him, mm-hmm. we're doing it, man. Like, yeah? Like, well done. Yeah, well done, bro. Like, you, you're becoming the person that I always thought you could. Oh, yeah. That's so cute. 
Give him a pat on the back. Be like, you got this. You don't even know, but you got this. We doing well. <laughs> yeah, that's the thing. Okay. Um, is it the last question? Last question? How many questions have I asked? You asked me three. <laughs> oh, three. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. Ready? <laughs> Fourth question. Let's go. What is the most valuable lesson that you've learned from professional? Actually, just golf in general. From just golf? Yeah. Um, why is my fear of winning? No. Why is my fear... Okay, wait, wait. How do I say it? <laughs> I'm losing. <laughs> <laughs> I, I always forget it, but it's like on everywhere. It's on my walls and everything. Mm-hmm. It was, why is my fear... Yeah, why is my fear of losing greater than my want for winning? Like, oh. why am I afraid to lose? You know? Uh-huh. Like, I, sh- I should want to win. Yeah. Why am I scared to win? Yeah. Yeah, it makes it makes no sense. So that's yeah. that's the best thing like I learned I learned like from golf, like playing a lot of competitions and everything. Yeah. And being in that scenario to win. Yeah. Yeah. I like basically. that. I like that. Yeah. <laughs> okay, last question. This is a question that we ask all our guests. Yeah. What would be the one thing that you would change about Kenya that will help young people thrive, succeed, grow, develop? What's that one thing you change about Kenya? Hey, let me not give uh, the answer I want to give. Let give me... it! We love controversy <laughs> here. We say what's on our mind. I, was, I, I, would, I would answer many things to that. Yeah. But um, the leaders. I, 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 would, change, mm-hmm. I would change the leaders, mm-hmm. honestly, because they're not there for the sport. They're not? No, not for sports. It's, uh, it's not sports to them. It's not... Anything that isn't lining their pockets. Yeah, exactly. So we gotta say it as it is. Yeah, honestly. I'll say it as it is. You know, I keep saying, I keep saying that we need them out so that our younger generation can come in. Yeah, hundred percent. And then I get people telling me, but it's not gonna change. And I'm like, but there is so much potential for it to change. But I don't know. But, but leaders, you, you yeah. never know in the future. Maybe. Exactly, you can't just predict the future. Maybe, yeah. You know, you know one day. Yeah. One day, it definitely happen. For sure. All right. Thank you so much. It was such a pleasure to have you on the podcast. Um, Thank you. First of all, being able to have time with you here. I know you're going to South Africa soon. Yeah. Um, but being able to reach out. And he said yes. And he was like, yeah, I'm so excited to do that. And I'm like, I said I'm a so fan. Good. I said, said I'm a fan. Oh, don't make me blush. <laughs> But thank you so much. Before we leave, you always ask our guests if there's anything you want to say, anything you want to shout out, anybody you want to thank. Have uh, your time. Banquet Apps of Kenya. <laughs> <laughs> Back at it again. <laughs> no, but thank you to my friends and family for supporting me and my whole team. And uh, yeah, we're doing a great job, man. Let's keep at it. You want to shout at yourself and Mr. TikTok me? Uh, shout out Champagne. <laughs> shout out Champagne. That's my guy, man. <laughs> Not being yourself. <laughs> also wanted to know if there's anybody you know that you would really love to see on the podcast. Maybe a name of somebody you know or somebody you ins- who inspires you, something like that. But they also have to be between the ages of 16 and 30. 16 and 30. Mm-hmm. Okay. I mean, uh, there are many. There are many. Me and my brother are basically the same. So <laughs> <laughs> we'll answer the questions the same way. Yeah. So I would say my brother. Yeah. But um there are plenty of other guys who inspire who, who work hard. Yeah. Like um not only in golf, mm-hmm. in other sports and everywhere. But um yeah, there, there's so many, there's so many I could I could name one of Okay, so you'll tell me later. Yeah, I'll tell yeah, you later. I, I can't really think of any yeah, like, off the head, but there there are plenty. Message. There's All so right. many. Okay. That's Lastly, of course, thank you, thank you, thank you so much. And we will definitely have you on again as you grow. I have names. So have some okay, go, go, <laughs> go ahead. Go I ahead. have some names. Um, some of my friends are some artists doing well right now. Mm-hmm. I think Mask and Kobe, they can explain to you how really that side is like as an entertainer. Yeah. Yeah. I think, um, yeah, I think they'd be really good and tell you some vital information. Okay. For sure. So we might just have them on as guests. <laughs> 
that's it from us today guys i hope you enjoyed this episode now before we leave we always leave you guys with a takeaway and the takeaway for today is what skills do you need to develop to do what you need to do if you want to own a business what skills do you need to have if you want to be a ceo what skills do you need to have if you want to work a nine to five and be an accountant what skills do you need to have or develop now we hope this was influential and firing we hope you guys were inspired by mutahi's episode and you got something from it so make sure to go and follow us on our social media subscribe like and comment on cryptic media studios platforms and on the grind podcast so you know what's coming next we love you guys bye our grinders